All right, we're all set up. We're ready to go. This is Steve Says, episode number 32. Before we get started, just make sure you're following all of our pages, our Peak Physique and Annuet page, our Peak Physique Suffering page, and the Steve Eckert Public Figure page. Make sure you're checking all that so you're not missing any of the information or updates or different broadcasts like this. We have different broadcasts on each different page, so make sure you're liking all those pages. So again, Steve, Steve Says, episode number 32. Like I say with, with these episodes, some people will hate, but most people will be able to re- be able to relate. This is all about personal development, peak freak style. We're talking about adapting, overcoming, becoming better, a better version of yourself, getting your shit together, stop being a little bitch, trusting the process, and making no excuses. And we're going to actually touch on all, some, some of the, all of those in one way or another today. If you have any questions, you could add them right there in the comment section at the bottom. Kind of, I got your questions right here so I can see them. I don't have to look on the little phone over there. So you can put the questions, comments, whatever. Tell me to shut up, fuck off, whatever you want to go, whatever you want to do. Again, so this, this is every week, Steve Says, episode number 32. Make sure you're liking the page, following it, all that stuff. So today we're going to talk about, let's say you hit a bad streak or you hit a wall you're, or you're at a plateau, even though we know plateaus don't exist when it comes to fitness, but just in general, in life, maybe you had the worst luck lately or, you know, whatever it is. And then we're talking about whatever, in any area of life, whether you're after getting that dream job or having a successful career or losing weight, getting in the best shape of your life, starting a business, making a sports team, being a fucking champion, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Have you hit rock bottom and have you feel, you feel like you have nowhere else to turn and you're ready to throw in the towel and give up or it just seems like it's not meant to be, it's not meant to happen maybe. So you just feel like it's, it's too late and you have no hope. But today we're going to discover how it's not too late and there is hope. We're going to go over the, the step-by-step Basic, basically the strategies and tools that you already have in yourself pretty much to break through these, these self-limiting beliefs and barriers that are just in your fucking head about what you're capable of and what your potential is. Kind of this is building off of what we've been building up to for the last weeks and weeks and months here on Steve Says. So no matter what the situation or the level you think you're at, even, the, even at your fucking worst, at your lowest level in your life or whatever it is, the biggest failures you're coming off of, there is always a way out. There's always a solution to every problem. And we're going to cover all that today and discover all that today. So don't just sit back and give up and play the role of, of a boo fucking who, poor little me. Uh, you know, I'm always the fucking victim or, you know, actually more like an entitled little bitch and, and fucking brat is what people act like a lot of times that just want everything handed to them. You know, they, they want maximum reward for minimum effort. So that's not who we're talking about today. You know, with, who's, who has a saying? Every, who, someone tell me who, the, who does, has a saying. Everyone wants, to go, everyone wants to go to heaven, but no one wants to die or something like that. Who's saying is that? I know it's in a song or something. I don't even remember who it is. Who could tell me who, who's... Looking at your guys' comments here. Who could tell me who's saying that was? That's basically what it is. Everyone wants a maximum reward with minimum effort without going through the suffering and the pain and, and the work, basically. And they want the maximum type of reward. So that's what we're going to be talking about today is not playing that role. We're talking about the opposite other people like that. So today's topics and words are for the people that are in the opposite of that whiny little bitch that I just mentioned. So today's for the people who are ready to take control back in their lives. Grab that fucker by the horns and steer it in the direction of your destiny. We're we're about to go through the steps on how you can get through that rough spot of failure or that down and out section of your life on your path to success. So let's, let's get going. Who could tell me, anyone know who that saying was? Everybody wants to go to heaven or no one wants to die or something like that. Who was it? Who was that saying? Because that's what we're talking about kind of here. So the, the, first, the first word or really thing you need to, to actually learn is, how can I give you a hint for it? Is basically, how, this is what you need when your back is up against the wall or you seem like that all the odds are against you. You need to become this word right here. Who can try and figure out what word that might be? Basically, this word means having the ability to find quick and clever ways to overcome difficulties. Someone give me that word. We're going to have like three or four different words. Whoever gets the most words is going to get a t-shirt. Even if it's someone who's not in the local area, I'll mail you a fucking t-shirt. If, you could, if you're the one that chooses most of these words. I think we got three main key points today and we like to play this game so you can figure it out. So if anyone could tell me what that word might be. Basically, it's having the ability to find quick and clever ways to overcome difficulties or being able to deal skillfully or promptly with new situations and difficulties. Who can tell me what I'm looking for, the word I'm looking for? It also can mean to be inventive or capable, adventurous, aggressive, basically able to meet uh, situations capable or capable of devising ways out of situations, if anyone can figure out what I'm talking about. 
you got about five seconds and you're going to lose your chance. That's going to be one point down that no one's going to win if someone can't tell me what the word is that I'm looking for. I'm just checking your guys' comments down here. Again, this is, you know, the first word is the first thing you need to do or actually the first thing you need to learn how to be when odds seem like they're against you or your back is against the wall. You need to become this word is, is the first step into, into digging yourself out of that hole in life and going towards your path and your destiny. No one can tell me what it is. I'm going to tell you what it is. That word is, you got three more seconds. I'll give you those hints again one more time. It can mean inventive, creative, adventurous, aggressive, able to meet situations head on, capable of devising ways out of situations. Can anyone tell me what my fucking word is? All right, you got three seconds. You got two seconds, one second, and no one got my word. My word is resourceful. You need to be freaking resourceful. Like I said, having the ability to find quick and clever ways to overcome difficulties or able to deal, deal skillfully or quickly with new situations. So to be resourceful, my personal definition of resourceful is basically figure it out. I tell people that all the time in all different places, figure it out. That is how you, that is the, what resourceful means is figure it out. Basically doing whatever the fuck it takes, whatever you have within your moral boundaries to accomplish your fucking mission. That is what resourceful is. The other saying, learn you learn to fish. Don't keep relying on someone to fish for you. Or if you teach someone that whole you know that whole fish saying, whatever, something like that. You know, they say the necessity of necessity that they say that necessity is the mother of creation. You know, then I think resourcefulness is is just born out of adversity. That's how you get resourceful when you're dealing with adversity, dealing with maybe failure or things aren't going your way. That's when you come become resourceful. Maybe you don't have the resources, so you become resourceful. And that is the fucking king to success in anything you do. A resourceful person can see the, the opportunity when everyone else just sees problems or obstacles in their way. So to, to the resourceful person, problems are just opportunities to get better, to move forward, or to maybe correct an error or a mistake or, or come bounce back from a failure, dig themselves out of a fucking hole that they dug themselves into in the first place. But they're going to use their resourcefulness to dig out of that hole, turn that negative into a positive. We talk about similar things like this all the time. Or basically, you know, those, those people, other, other types of people that are not resourceful, just see the problems, the obstacles, the negative part of everything. Or, you know, basically, I like to just say, like, stop being a little bitch. Just, just take what you have, work hard, use your fucking brain, and make shit happen. Before you know it, your resourcefulness will create more resources at your disposable disposal. I guarantee it. I guarantee it happens. So if you want something or need something, you must become fucking relentless and obsessed with success and be resourceful to get what you need to, you know, to do what you can with what you have. Stop making fucking excuses and just make shit happen. And magic will happen when you start thinking with your freaking head and become resourceful. So... How do, how do you become resourceful when you come across a challenge or adversity? Basically, no matter what you're up against or no matter how fucking bad it seems, this is how you're going to you become resourceful. A couple of quick tips or steps that you can go through. You need to keep an open mind. Don't, don't be a fucking know-it-all. Think, you know, think about other ways that things can be done. Not just the way that you're used to doing them or the way you personally think they should be done, but think about the way they should be done to align with the, the overall fucking mission of what you're looking to accomplish. Then next, be confident. Step into every situation thinking I am a fucking badass. If I go ask my kids today, I just go right up to my kids, a three-year-old and a freaking six-year-old, and I just say to them, what are you? They tell me, I'm freaking awesome. And they yell it at the top of their lungs. You need to be confident no matter what hole you've dug yourself in. Basically, no, no matter what hole you dug yourself in, confident you can dig yourself out and re reverse your bad fortunes. Be creative. You need to be creative. Be crazy, inventive. Think outside the freaking box. Get wild and unconventional, but still within what's, what is right and what is fucking moral, of course, is what you need to be doing. Be proactive. Like, like many things, a key to, to success and a key to overcoming a lot of adversity and anxiety is action. So just be proactive. Take, be, take action before it's too late, basically. Be persistent. Be stubborn. Be that scrappy, fighting to the death, never say die, persistent motherfucker. That's what you need to be. We've talked about persistence a lot. Here on Steve Says. Of course, we know we need to be positive. No negativity allowed. Through it all, stay calm, stay cool, stay fucking positive like you see me right now. Calm and cool and fucking positive. Every step of the way. You can't, effectively be, you can't be effectively resourceful 
If you're always finding the negative in every situation and you're always drowning in a, in a fucking cup of water, you cannot be resourceful when that's the situation. So how do you train yourself for adversity and how do you train yourself to be resourceful? The first way, which we talk about a lot of times in all areas of life, is to be prepared. You need to be prepared. We cover preparation a lot. Basically, expect the best, but prepare for the worst. Prepare for different outcomes, different situations, scenarios. Always have a fucking backup plan. Plan for, have a plan A, a plan B, a plan Z, all the way to fucking Z is what you need to do. Then you also need to control your time. Don't waste time on bullshit or meaningless little tasks that are not moving towards your goals and and not really productive with your day. Stop wasting your time on bullshit. And then also having clear communication is what's going to help train you to, to to get started on this first step of being resourceful. So that just a quick recap on that resourceful, how to train to be resourceful, keep an open mind, be confident, be creative, be proactive, be persistent, be positive, and then be prepared after that. And then control your time and clear communication. When something goes wrong in your life and there's adversity or a problem, or you dug yourself in that fucking hole, half the time, most of the problems and adversity that people have, a lot of times they fucking brought that shit on themselves and then they, you know, want someone to get them out of it. You need to be resourceful and figure that shit out. Not always look, you know, for someone to, to just pull you out of the hole and not figure it out yourself. So when something goes wrong, just like in the Marine Corps, this is how you're going to deal with it. Once it's too late, you, you prepared for it, but shit still happens. We know that. So if something went wrong, this is how you can deal with it. Just like we did in the Marine Corps, you're going to assess the situation, assess what is available to you, assess what is my highest priority, keep in mind your ultimate goal and mission, Make a quick decision and then fucking execute to the end no matter what gets in your freaking way. That's the way to do it. This was more easily described in in the book, a recent book called Extreme Ownership. By It was written by U.S. Navy SEALs. Basically, this is how they deal with adversity or situation is relax, look around, and make a call. That's as simple as it is. It really is that fucking simple. It's, It's really, if you think about it, relax, look around, make a call, which is... A little longer of a way of explaining it is assess the situation, assess what is available to me, assess what my highest priority is, keep in mind my ultimate goal and mission, make a quick decision, and then fucking execute. In other words, relax, look around, make a call. So uh, what, what's his name? Sun Tzu, the Chinese general, military strategist, philosopher from, from ancient China. Yes, I'm going to quote Sun Tzu. Yes, I read now and then. I'm, I'm up to the, the letter G in the, in the alphabet, learning my letters. So he said, however desperate the situation and circumstances, don't despair. When, when, there, when there is everything to fear, be unafraid. When surrounded by dangers, fear none of them. When without resources, depend on resourcefulness. That is just like some deep shit right there. To me, that is at least. And that's like the answer to a lot of questions and a lot of problems. But when I was a kid, I was like, whatever, five, six, seven, I don't even know how old, eight years old, I want to like... I wasn't even allowed to play with guns or anything like that. Go figure. Then I go become a Marine. But anyway, I wanted to do, go to some like martial arts classes. We couldn't afford it. I wanted to go to a boxing gym to start boxing. We couldn't afford it. I didn't do, I didn't do anything. I only played Little League for three years because the coaches called me up because I was pretty fairly decent athlete when I was a kid. So they, I got to play Little League for, for free for three years. I didn't have, we, pay, we didn't have any money to put me on the team. So they just put me on the team for free. I wanted to do boxing also, but we didn't have any money. After, after, we, after three years, they said, you got to start paying. So I stopped playing. Who knows? Anyway, so I wanted to take some karate classes, boxing classes. Couldn't do none of it. None of those people were letting you do it for free. Little League did because they wanted their team to win. So what did I do when I was a kid? I would take the old ratty mattress. Like There was like springs. Literally, those like springs sticking out of it that would poke and stab you in the fucking back when you're sleeping. That's the kind of mattress I was sleeping on. I took it. I wrapped it around the, the, a post of a bed, of a bunk bed wrapped it around, tied it with a bunch of sheets, like four or five sheets around it, and used that as my punching bag, a heavy bag. First, so that was resourcefulness right from the beginning, finding ways to be resourceful. Tying that freaking mattress, punching these, these fucking springs, rusty springs that are sticking out of a mattress. But that also helped me blow off a lot of steam. Obviously, you know, punch it out. That's going to help you blow off a lot of steam when you're just a angry, pissed off, frustrated little, little badass kid. But that's a whole nother episode right there. So that was boxing. I wanted to get into boxing. We didn't have any money. So that's what I did. Put a mattress on the pole. We started Peak Physique. We put every penny we had into starting this gym when we first opened up in Spring Valley, a first location after just doing some in-home training. Every dime, every penny, 
every resource was gone. So we needed to get resourceful and boxing again kind of led it came into the picture. So I came up with this idea. We're going to do this free boxing class, free boxing bootcamp class every single week. And we still do it now. It's now over eight years running every single Thursday night, 615, totally free class. And that's what we did to think of outside the box to do some free marketing, get some people in the gym, get some pictures and videos and all this stuff that we use for promotional purposes. We had to think outside the box and get resourceful. Now I have a successful business partially based off of boxing. I'm not a professional boxer, but we have a business based off of it. And that's what resourcefulness is. Tying a mattress to a fucking pole, offering free, a free class every week and putting it out there and then turning it into a freaking, a, a booming business. All right. So the next, that, that was resourcefulness. So after you are resourcefulness, you're going to go into this next word if anyone can figure out what this next stage. So you, to overcome these different, you know, this down part of your life or this failure or this hole you dug yourself in, the way to dig yourself out of that hole first is to become resourceful. Next is this next word. No one figured out the first word, so we got two words left. Whoever gets the most is going to get a t-shirt. I will even mail out to you if you're not in the New York, New Jersey area. I don't care where you are, I'll mail it to you. So this next word is basically... An appropriate or a favorable time or occasion. If you could, I'm going to give you hints, definitions, different words that fall under this word. If you could figure out what this word is. This also, this leads me to another quote. You know, we love quotes on Steve Says. Wayne Gretzky said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. One of my favorite quotes. I use it all the time. I use that all the time, that quote to people. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take or that you never take. Wayne Gretzky leads us to this next word, which is an appropriate or favorable time or occasion. This next word also is a situation or condition favorable for attainment of a goal. If anyone can figure out that it is. I don't see any comments on here. I don't know if comments are coming in or not. Or no one just knows what the hell they're doing. But this also could mean a good position or a chance or prospect as for advancement or success. A favorable, appropriate, advantageous combination of circumstances. That's a good one right there. A chance or a prospect. A lucky chance. Favorable circumstances. An opening a fighting chance if anyone could figure out what that freaking word is. I can't get to the comments. I think there's comments. I don't know. So that after you become resourceful, you need to recognize this next word when it is when it comes along. And if no one knows what that is, I'm going to give it to you in about three seconds. I'll give you a couple more quick hints. It's an appropriate or favorable time or occasion, a situation or a condition favorable for attainment of a goal. Think about it. Think about it. What are we talking about here? It's a lucky chance, an opening. This is what we're looking for is an opportunity. So once you're resourceful, opportunities are going to come around. So opportunity is what we're talking about. Who, Tom, Thomas Edison, opportunity is missed by most people because it is dressed in overalls and looks like work. That is Thomas Edison. That's some crazy stuff right there. Think about it. Opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed in overalls and it looks like work. And that's pretty true. We talked about procrastination a few weeks ago. Opportunity is the, is the complete fucking opposite of procrastination. In my book, at least, it is. You, you, if you were resourceful enough and assess the situation, when that opportunity, you know, when that opportunity that you need presents itself, you need to fucking recognize it. You need to pounce on that like a, like a lion pouncing on a fucking goat. I don't know. Do lions even eat goats? I don't even know. Anyway, Anyway, this doesn't mean jump on every opportunity, but the, but the ones that are in line with your vision and your goal, your desired outcome, you need to freaking attack. Don't just, don't just sit on your fucking ass and wait to be given an opportunity. Go out and chase that shit. Create, create fucking opportunity. Remember, remember earlier how adversity is just an opportunity. You meet, you meet adversity. Don't just, just like, you know, like a little, be like a little bitch. And if, if it's the right move, you know, swing for the fences, create your own opportunities and seize them. Make those opportunities work for you, not against you. Adversity and problems are just opportunities. Uh, uh, Winston Churchill said, a pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity. An optimist sees the opportunity in every difficult. That is basically saying an opportunity or a, a problem or adversity is just basically an opportunity. Andrew Benner, do you see opportunity after I said it? I'm going to have to check the videotape on that one. Opportunity. So I had an opportunity when, when I was in, I was like 19 years old. I was in front of a judge in New City, right here in Rockland County. He gave me the choice. One to three years in jail or four years in the Marine Corps. 
So this is obviously, I dug myself in a fucking hole, but I needed to find, you know, in this adversity and obviously this fucking problem, I had to, you know, this, I saw this as an opportunity to get my shit together and I haven't looked back since. And, and once you see that opportunity, you need to take freaking massive action. Last, last year at the biggest fitness conference of the year, I was given the opportunity to speak for a few minutes with a chance to win a Land Rover. So I, I planned it, you know, I, I planned to take advantage of that opportunity and I blew that shit out of the fucking water. And that's when we were voted America's top trainer in studio by seizing the opportunity, grabbing it by the fucking throat and making that opportunity your bitch and letting it work for you instead of against you, taking that adversity or stressful situation and creating opportunity out of it. Now this year, I've actually been invited back and and I'm actually a scheduled presenter on dominating your path and living life with no fucking excuses. This year at the biggest fitness conference of the year in the world, I'll be one of the, the presenters at this year's event. So this leads us to the next word that I'm looking for. So we just talked about opportunity. We talked about being resourceful, which is going to lead you to opportunities, taking advantage of those opportunities, turning adversity and problems by being resourceful, turning adversity and problems into opportunity, letting those, taking advantage of those opportunities leads us to this next word. The next word is not, you're not going to, it's not going to make sense to you how it falls in line with these two until I kind of explain it a little further. So it's going to be a little hard for you to figure this one out. This word, I'll give you some hints for it right off the bat. It's Basically, esteem for, for or a sense of the worth or excellence of a person, a personal quality or ability, or something considered as a manifestation or personal quality or ability. It could be a privilege, a privileged position, or someone or something considered to have certain rights or privileges, proper acceptance or courtesy or acknowledgement. It can be appreciation, dignity, honor, esteem, even fear. Fear could be even considered one of those same words as much as it seems like it couldn't. Recognition, tribute. Who can tell me the word I'm looking for? While you're thinking about that, I'll give give you another quote. Albert Einstein, which falls into this next word we're looking for. He said, I speak to everyone the same way, whether he's the garbage man or the president of the university. That tells you what this word, that basically leads right into this word. And I'm going to give it to you because we need to keep rolling. That word is respect. Respect is our third word. One second. We just got disconnected there. We're back now little plug just fell down. Anyway, so respect. So you had to become resourceful, to create opportunity, take advantage of the opportunity, led us to respect. Now you're probably wondering, how the the, the fuck does respect fall in line with that? Well, I'm about to tell you, because like I was just saying, respect is appreciation, it's honor, it's recognition, it's tribute, it's also uh, dignity, and even fear. So you need to obviously first fucking respect yourself and respect others before you can expect anyone to actually actually respect you. But you also need to respect the game, respect the chase, the hunt, respect the fucking challenge of success and victory. Respect the people who've been there and done that before you, the people you can learn from or be mentored by. You need to fucking respect that and respect them. Respect the rules of the game, the unwritten laws of doing the right thing in the game that you're playing, whatever it is, whatever we're talking about here, whether it's getting in shape or... A, a business or work, a making a team, sports, athletics, whatever. Respect the rules of the game. There's unwritten laws of doing the right thing. We're going to get into that in a second. So if, if your resourcefulness is based on being a, a backstabbing, scumbag, jealous motherfucker and taking advantage of that opportunity that arises from that douchebaggery and lack of morals and, ec- and ethics, that is a lack of respect for the game and a lack of respect for the process. So when you're resourceful... You could be resourceful and be like a a scumbag backstabbing resourceful person, like I just said, which is going to create opportunities, but you need the respect. That's why I said it's resourcefulness, opportunity, respect, because it could go in 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 many different directions when you're talking about resourcefulness and coming up with thinking outside the box. And there's some scumbag tactics that people could use out there in all areas of life. So the, the lack of respect, although might lead to instant gratification or a small victory 
over time, it's just not sustainable as, as, a, as being a fucking scumbag is not a solid foundation to long-term success or victory or even attaining goals. This holds true for everything. Sports, weight loss, fitness, business, everything. Look at the athletes who stick, stick a fucking needle in their ass cracks. They, they go and win a UFC championship. They're, they're the greatest of all time. They go walking around talking a lot of shit. You know, talk, talking shit to the people that they beat and knocked out and all this other stuff. Making fun of them and all this whatever else. Then they go to fail a fucking drug test because they stuck that needle in their fucking ass crack. And they get stripped of their title. And they're freaking public, publicly shamed. And, and now they're just nobody. And so that's what I'm talking about. You need to have respect for the game, whatever that game is you're playing. You want to lose weight? You can't go starve yourself. You can't go take a bunch of pills or just go, go look for the easy way out and have some fucking surgery or sit in the sauna for three hours because you might hit record weight loss in record time, but, but then your insides are going to be all fucking mush and traumatized for life or, or you're going to gain triple the fucking weight back just by looking at a piece of the evil bread. So... You have to respect the game that you're in. You need to be resourceful, create opportunities, take advantage of those opportunities, but then have respect for the process and for the game and for what you're doing. In business, you intentionally try to sabotage a coworker or, or a competitor or, or get the top salesman you know, position or sales in your company by lying and cheating and being a, a fucking fraud. You, you even build your business off of that. It might be give you a quick boost, make you a quick buck, but eventually the true colors are going to be revealed. So to those that don't have, you know, their heads stuck up their fucking ass and, and you're just, a, you're just going to be labeled a con and an immoral fraud that you are. So you have to have respect for it. You have to have respect for the opportunity when you get those opportunities that were created by being resourceful, because being resourceful can also mean being a scumbag. Like I was just saying, the bottom line is you need to respect the game, respect for others in the game, respect for those that were in the game before you and have fucking respect for yourself. You also need to respect the opportunities that came along or that you actually created. Some opportunities you won't, won't, won't ever be there again or they might change or they might not remain the same. So you need to respect each and every opportunity that you created with your resourcefulness. If that makes sense. It makes sense in my fucking head. I don't know if it makes sense to you. But it makes sense to me and that's all that really matters to me. And whatever it is that you're after, getting that dream job, having a successful career, losing weight, starting a business, making a sports team, you always have a chance, always have hope you just need to be resourceful, create opportunity, and then have some fucking respect. And that's what it's going to take to dig yourself out of those holes that you probably dug yourself into. Simple as that. Be resourceful, create opportunity, take advantage of those opportunities, and then respect the game, respect yourself, respect everyone else, and respect the process of that resourcefulness and opportunity. If you have any questions or comments, put them down here and I'll respond to you, get back to you. If not, I'll see you guys soon.